When you work with solutions, you often have to do calculations involving concentrations of them. And it turns out there are several different ways of expressing concentration for a solution. Each of them has their advantages and their disadvantages, and each of them has a way in which they are used. So molarity is the first one we're going to talk about, and it's represented by a capital M, and it is it means moles of solute per volume of solution. Okay, it's important to note that it's divided by the volume of the solution, not the volume of the solvent. And we can express it as moles per liter. And this is generally the most common one used by chemists. But one of the problems with it, in some cases, is that it, uh, the volume on the bottom will change with temperature. So the value can change slightly with temperature. Okay, and that often isn't a consideration, but in case it is, there are some other units that we use. And again, remember that the top is the solute, the bottom is the solution. The next unit is called molality, which sounds a lot like molarity. It's only different by one letter. And that's a small case M. And that one refers to moles of solute per mass of solvent. Okay, so notice that we're talking about solvent here. And on the one that was molarity, we're talking about solution. So the denominator in this case for molality is the solvent, not the entire solution. And it's the mass, not the volume. So the, gen the most common units are moles per kilogram. And that's kilogram for um, the solvent again. So remember that the denominator is not the solution. This is the only unit which uses the solvent itself. And because it's the mass of it, it doesn't change with temperature. When water is the solvent, then um, one kilogram is approximately one liter. Okay, so it's about the same. And so therefore, with fairly dilute aqueous solutions, Um, you can say that the molality is approximately equal to the molarity when it's dilute. All right, and that will, um, molality will be used in some the colligative properties, which we're going to be talking about um, in another video. The next unit is mass percent, and that is basically a ratio of masses. Um, we actually, that's a part of a general category, which is just um, parts by mass, but it's given by the mass of the solute, and as always, it's the solute on top over the mass of the solution. So that will be given by kilograms per kilogram, kilogram solute per kilogram of solution. And it's generally multiplied by some factor to, um, well, it's for percent, it's multiplied by 100. So it's times 100, that ratio times 100 is going to give you mass percent. Um, if you multiply it by other things, you get other units. If you multiply it by a million, you get parts per million. And you can also multiply it by a billion and get parts per billion, which you may have heard of. But mass percent is a ratio of masses solute over solution. And the final one is also a ratio. Instead of two masses, it's a mole fraction. So it's a ratio of moles. And it's given by a large x, or sometimes a chi, Greek letter chi. And that's moles of solute over moles of solution. So it's the fraction of the solution that is the solute. And if you multiply it times 100, 
then you get mole percent. All right, so those are the basic units that will be used in, for different um, applications. Let's, uh, one thing we need to be able to do though is convert between the different ones. So we're gonna need to know what, about concentration conversions. Um, the first example we're gonna do, and we're gonna do a few, is if we have 30% by mass hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, in water, we wanna convert that to molality. Okay, so first, what is it? And then what does molality look like? So if you want to convert to molality, what you're starting with is a percent by mass. So it's times 100 because it's percent, and it's the mass of the solute over mass of solution. We just did that up here. Mass solute over mass of solution times 100 because it's a percent. Then we have to figure out what we want to convert it to. Molality is, if you look above, moles of solute per mass, and that's kilograms of solution. Nope, sorry, that one is solvent. Hope you caught that. That's the mass of the solvent, not the solution. All right, so now let's think about how we get between them. And actually doing the numerator separate from the denominator can be a helpful way to think about it. So if you need to go from, because it's solute on the top and uh, all, in all cases. So if you want to convert between mass of something and moles of something, you know what that conversion is. It's molar mass. And if you want to convert between the mass of the whole solution, which is solute and solvent, to mass of just the solvent, you simply have to subtract off the mass of the solute. Okay, so let's do those two things down below. And let's realize that 30% is also, can also be thought of as 30 grams of H2O2 per 100 grams of solution. All right, and let's do the top first and then the bottom, and then we'll combine them. Okay, so the top, we're just gonna take the 30 grams and we're gonna put it over one and we're gonna find the molar mass of H2O2 which is 34.0. And that gives us 0.882 moles of H2O2. So that's the top. How about the bottom? The bottom was 100 grams of solution. We want to subtract off how much of it is the solvent. Well, we already have it, 30 grams. So it's 100 grams solution minus 30 grams of solute is going to equal 70 grams of water, which is the solvent. We'll convert that to kilograms because that's what we need for, if you look back up above, the mass for molality, the mass needs to be in kilograms. So we convert to kilograms, which simply means moving decimal places over, decimal place over to three places. Okay, and then we now we can combine the tops and the bottoms. The top was 0.882 moles of H2O2. The bottom is 0 0.070 kilograms, oops, that was kilograms of water. And you do the division and you get 13 moles per kilogram, which is the units for molality, so it's 13 molal. All right, how about another conversion? Let's try converting the same starting units to mole fraction. Okay, the starting units were mass of solute over mass of solution, and it was 30%. We'll convert it to mole fraction. Well, what does mole fraction looks like, look like? Well, it's a ratio of moles, okay? Moles of what on top? Always the solute. 
and one on the bottom, the solution. The only time it's solvent is when you're doing molality. Okay, so what's the conversion between mass and moles for the solute? Same thing we just did. Molar mass. All right, how about for the bottom? We have the mass of the solution. We want moles of solution. We're going to need to do a molar mass conversion for the solute and the solvent separately. So we'll do molar mass of solute and solvent. I think it's a useful exercise to think of the top and bottom differently. All right, we already have the top. Okay, we already converted from 30% to the moles of the solute. It was 0.882. So we don't need to redo that, but the bottom is different. Okay, so on the bottom, we're going to take that. We already know what the mass of the solute, or sorry, solvent is, 70 grams. We did that before. So we just have to convert that to moles of solvent using the molar mass of water. And that gets us 3.88 moles of water. Then we can simply combine them. Okay, the top is the same as before, 0.882 moles of the solute. And then the bottom has got to be that number plus the moles of the, of the solute and the moles of the solvent. So it's 0.882 moles plus point or 3.88 moles. And if you do the math for that, you get 0.19 and that equals chi, the mole fraction. We're going to do one more example of a conversion. We're going to convert the same original number to molarity. Okay, so it's look again at what you started with. Look at what you need to get to. Molarity is moles of solute per volume of solution. All right, so the mass per mole is the same exact thing we've done before. So that's not any different. The top is done for us. It's 0.882. But to get from mass of the solution to the volume of the solution, we're going to need a density. Okay, the conversion between a mass and a volume is a density. And um, that would either need to be given to you, the, volume, the density of the solution, or you have to assume it is the same density as that of the solvent, which is often done. So it is either given or assumed, depending on the circumstances. And our solvent is water, so we're going to assume the density is the same uh, actually, no, we're not. We're going to say the density of this solution is equal to 1.11 grams per milliliter. The density of pure water is just one. So this is a little bit more dense with the hydrogen peroxide in it. All right, our numerator is exactly the same. I'm going to write it again, 0.882 moles H2O2. The bottom, we take the mass of the solution, 100 grams of solution, and we use the density which was given. We have to put the gram part on the bottom, 1.11 grams solution per one milliliter of solution. And then we want to convert that to liters. It's given in milliliters for the density, but we want it in uh, actual liters of solution. I should say liters volume in liters. So we're going to do another conversion, one liter to 1,000 milliliters. And we get 0 0.0901 liters. So now we can put that on the bottom. And do the math and get 9.8 molar H2O2. All right, so that's three different examples. And again, the strategy that I like to use is write down what you are starting with, write down the units you want to get to at the end, and then do each, each part separately, the top and the bottom, and then combine them. 
Okay, we're actually going to um, let you try a practice problem. And so you should um, work this problem. This, um, it's about a chemical made by 3M, which we're calling PFOS. It was found in the blood of certain residents at a concentration of, and that's a mistake, it should be 3.6 times 10 to the minus 6 percent by mass, which is 36 parts per billion. And we want to know what the molarity is. So we want to convert percent by mass to molarity for this compound. I've given you some information you'll need. The molar mass of this compound is around 500 grams per mole, and we're going to assume the density of blood is 1.025 grams per milliliter. So go ahead and work that, and then check your answers. Your answer. Okay, so how do we start? We're going to start with the ratio 3.6 times 10 to the minus 6 grams of PFOS over 100 grams of solution. And our solution in this case is blood. Okay, so that's what we have. What we want to go to is molarity, which is moles of the solute PFOS in a liter of solution, which is blood. All right, so the top, we're going from grams to moles. By now you should know what that is, molar mass, which was given. Right, it's given right there. The bottom, we're going from grams to liters. Okay, so we can use our density. All right, so first we'll do the top. And we'll take 3.6 times 10 to the minus 6 grams of PFOS, our solute. And use the molar mass, 1 mole for 500 grams. And we get about 7.2 times 10 to the minus 9 moles PFOS. Now we can do the bottom. and start with our 100 grams of solution, which is blood. We can write solution or we can write blood, doesn't matter. And we're going to use density convert. 1.025 grams per milliliter. And since we want it into liters, again we have to convert to liters. And we get 9.76 times 10 to the minus 2 liters. Now we can combine those two numbers into one equation. The top is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 9 moles PFOS. The bottom is 9.76 times 10 to the minus 2 liters. And when you do the math, let's do it to two sig figs. 7.4 times 10 to the minus 8 molar PFOS in their blood.